Banner Knowledge Bowling, Steve here coming at you doing our mid-season check-in. This episode's on the release, but before we get started, if you're not a subscriber, please do so. Like, share, comment, and get a friend to subscribe. That way we can grow the channel and spread the knowledge. All right, let's jump into this episode. You know, I get a lot of questions on the release. This is a tough topic, so we're going to jump right into it. At the end, please make sure you put your questions and comments down below, and we can continue the conversation. The first thing I'm going to start with with the release is that you need a great fit. It's got to really fit your hand well. And the reason I say that we need a really great fit is when we're talking about the release, we need to have a very light grip pressure. You know, I like to talk about grip pressure on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being a death grip, 0 having it fallen off your hand. Man, I like to hold my grip at a 1 or a 2. And the reason we need this light grip pressure is if we have a lot of grip pressure, we're going to engage the big muscles, the big muscles in the arm and the shoulder. And when the big muscles are engaged, it's very difficult to get the wrist the hand and the fingers to do their thing. If there's a lot of tension, it's hard to manipulate the wrist, hand, and fingers. So we want to have a very light grip pressure, and that's going to allow us to do more with our hands and manipulate the release the way that we want to. The, the second thing that I want to say is the release really has to come under your shoulder. You know, we want to be in great balance. My coach always talked about having leverage. And what we're talking about there is, is if we're in great balance and we're releasing the ball under our shoulder, we're maximizing the energy transfer from our approach into our hand, through the ball, and going down the lane. So when we're manipulating our release, we want to be able to see the greatest amount of change and if we're in a great balance position and we come around the ball versus coming up the back of it a little bit more, we really want to be able to see that. And, and in order to do that, we need to be in great balance and a great leveraged position. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to give the warning. You've heard the coach say or your buddy say, keep your hand behind the ball. And this is not entirely correct. And why I say that is most bowlers translate that, um, keep their hand behind the ball, and they stay completely behind it, and they come up right behind the back of the ball. The ball gets into a very early roll with very little side rotation. These balls tend to roll out. We leave a lot of flat tens, and if you're going to be completely up the back of the ball, you're going to need a lot of speed. So my warning is, yes, you want to stay behind the ball, but it's not completely behind the ball. Now, the way we get to that, I feel, is we should focus on the elbow. We always want the elbow to face down the target line. We do not want this elbow to face the side wall of the bowling center. That's what we call chicken wing. And again, when we chicken wing it, we are not maximizing the energy transfer. We're going to rob the ball from energy. So the, the first thing we want to think of is we want our elbow to go down the target line. And the reason we want the elbow to go down the target line is then we can think about the wrist. We can think about the hand and the wrist because we want the wrist to roll through and around the ball. And we don't, and I, and I like to say when we want to go through and around the bowling ball, the bowling ball is in 3D. It's in three dimensions. It's not a two dimensional clock. We don't want to do this with the wrist. We want to go through and we want to go through with the elbow pointing down the target line. We don't want to get this around motion by making the elbow go out and facing the sidewall. So when we're thinking about the release and the wrist and the hand and the fingers, it goes through the ball and around the ball with the elbow going down the target line. We do not, again, want a 2D or two-dimensional clock where we do this. It goes 
It goes up, through, and around. So when we get that feeling, the different kinds of releases that I've talked about are the releases where you feel like you're going through the ball and very little around. That would be the up the back. You're going to have the feeling where you go through and the most around the ball. That will give you the most side rotation. And then, of course, we want to do something in between. You know, that, that halfway point between up the back and completely around. That's going to give us three very unique rolls using our wrist, hand, and finger. So, if we're coming up the back of the ball, that ball is going to roll the earliest and be the smoothest on the back part of the lane. When we come up through and around the ball the most, that's going to be the cleanest. It's going to skid the most to the right. And when it finds friction, and that's the key, it will hook the most. It'll be the biggest hockey stick. Then, of course, the one in between is the one in between. As we get good at this, and, and, and we can really do those three releases, we can cut the you know, we can cut that in a half again, so we can come almost all the way around it between the, the halfway and the full, or between straight up the back and the halfway. And you can see how we can start to manipulate that release. Now to help us, sometimes I'll use finger pressure to help the feel of my hand going either through the ball and up it, or through the ball and around it. So what I mean by that is, as we talked in the beginning, that I want to have really light grip pressure. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to try to hold it at a 1, let's say. And if I want to get around the ball more, what I might do is I might put my pointer finger and I might make that a 2 going into the ball. Everything else is a 1. Since I have a little more pressure on this side of my hand, I'm going to come around the ball more. You can also do it with your middle finger. The same is true on the other side of the ball. If I have that really light grip pressure, a one, I might make my pinky a two or my ring finger a two. So I have pressure just on this side of my hand. If that's the case, I tend to stay more up the back of the ball and I get less side rotation. So a trick to help you either get more or less side rotation is where you have the pressure in the hand. If it's middle finger towards the thumb, you're going to come more around it. If it's middle finger and more towards the pinky, you're going to stay more up the back of it. But here's the key to the release. We want to be able to manipulate the roll of the ball. And we need to, we want to be able to do that in competition. And we want to be able to do it on demand. So this is something that you need to practice and you need to get comfortable with so that when you're under tournament conditions, when you're in your league and it counts, you can do it on demand. If we come up the back of the ball with the least amount of side rotation, that's the ball that should dig in the earliest, and because it's using energy quickly, it should be the smoothest on the back part of the lane. If we have the feel where we come around the ball the most, that's going to be the cleanest, so it's going to be able to get to the right the easiest, and when it finds friction, it should be very fast. It should find that friction and hook a lot and look a lot like a hockey stick. And then, of course, we can go in between those two releases. And we want to be able to do that. So, on demand, while we're in our tournaments. So that when we're in a game, and the lanes are starting to get a little early, and we're leaving that flat 10, and we want to get the ball a little further down the lane, and come in at a little sharper angle, that's that feeling where, you know what, I might get a little bit of grip pressure, and I'm going to come around that ball, and it's going to get two or three feet more, and it's going to hook back and hopefully hopefully snap out the 10. This is, this is of, the, of the five adjustments that I go to. The release is one that I talk about. I encourage you to go check that video out. So there's a lot of information that we threw into this video. What I suggest is in your local area, 
find a certified coach. They're going to be able to walk you through this and they're going to be able to give you the tools and the techniques so that you can feel these different releases. Put your comments and questions below and we'll certainly talk about this more. Thanks a lot.